程。那第二场议程是由啊宋俊伟以及陈坤玉两位讲者。第一位是 C Python 的 contributor，C Python 的一个 contributor。第二位是一个呃治安方面的一个 researcher。他们今天为我们带来一个啊。呃治安的相关的议题，它是呃有关于 Zip Bump， 然后跟 C Python 核心之间的一个呃治安相关相连接的一个治安相关的探讨。那我们掌声欢迎两位讲者。啊、uh, ，Hello everyone, my name is Junwei Song, and this is Kun Yuchen. Today our topic is click, click, boom, bounce over our mind. In this talk, we will share our venture while conducting a cybersecurity research. You guys ready? Let's get started. All right. So my name is Junwei Song. I'm a Python developer and a malware hunter. And this is Kun Chen. He is a security researcher and a C Python contributor. All right. So now let's look at the online. The first two part, we will show you how we start the adventure, and then we will give you the brief introduction of the zip bomb. And number three,、uh, we will tell you why. Why do we want to create a PIP packager mitigating the zip bomb? And number four, we will share our experience of requesting a CVE number. And number five,、uh, we will also tell you. Why do we want to patch the C Python module? And our discussion with the core developer on BPO. And this part would be introduced by Kun Yuchen, which is the most exciting part. All right. So number one, let me tell you how the venture started. As I mentioned earlier, we are cybersecurity researcher, so we want to develop a malware analysis engine. And our goal is to join Virus Total. So we send an email to Virus Total to ask for the criteria to join them. They respond, and they said the first thing we should combat is the zip bomb problem. We took a challenge, and here we go. All right, so let's talk a little bit about a zip bomb. By definition. The bomb is a file, and it is designed to crash the program or system reading it. And as you can see here, this is an equation of calculating the compression ratio. The numerator, which is uncompressed size, will be divided by the、uh, denominator, which is compressed size, and then you can get a compression ratio. According to our experience, if this number is greater than a hundred, it is highly suggested as a zip bomb. And and so now let's look at the real case.、Uh, the uncompressed content, which is one point one gigabyte, and the compressed one is a thousand k. So let's do a little bit calculation. The compression ratio here is a thousand, which is more than a hundred. In other words, this is a zip bomb. And by the way, if you want to know how to make a zip bomb, please check the appendix for more information. All right. So since our goal is to mitigate the zip bomb problem, so we did a lot of research on the internet. But no Python packages for zip bomb mitigation were found. So based on Kara Marie's work, we developed some mitigations. And since we have limited time, please find them in the appendix for more information. But wait a minute. Since we could not find similar mitigation package for Python, how about we create one and upload it to Puppy? All right. So based on Kara Marie's work, we create a package called Sunzip, secure on it, a secure unzip, and you can install it through typing pip install sunzip. But wait a minute. What if C Python zip file module already has this feature built in? So we decide to give it a shot. 
we want a very, very simple script to test whether the zip file module has this protection built in or not. And the answer is obvious. No, it does not. But wait a minute. Does that mean we just found a vulnerability in C Python? Well, this is huge, man. All right, so let me share our experience of requesting a CVE number. CVE stands for Common Vulnerability and Exposure. It is a list containing an identification number and a description for publicly known cybersecurity vulnerability. So we just fill in the form and submit our CV request to the authority. Few days later, we got a reply from the authority and they issued us a CVE number, which is 2019-9674. And the suggested description here is lib slash zip file dot py in Python through 3.7.2 allows remote attackers to cause a denial of service via a zip bomb. But wait a minute. How about we indirectly implement zip bomb prevention in C Python zip file module? So we did it. With the mitigation we have discussed before, we focused on the zip file.py. So we want to patch our mitigation into list. So after a few days, we have done this patch. So we decided to send this patch back to the C Python community. And before that, there are some steps we need to know. First, you need to address the issue on BPO. Second, uh, you need to discuss your issue and your proposed solutions with the core developer. And number three, send your patch through a GitHub pull request. And number four, once the consensus will reach, the pull request will be merged. All right, so next part, I will hand over to Kun Shen. He will introduce the most exciting part, which is the discussion with the core developer on BPO. Hi, everyone. My name is Kun Yu Chen. I'm going to do the most exciting part. All right, so uh, me and Jingwei, we just, uh, we just uh, do some works to find the security uh, issues in C Python module. And we also develop some methods, mitigations, uh, to, to mitigate the zip bomb problem. And we decide to send the patch back to the C Python community. So we directly went to box.python.org, BPO. It is the platform that everyone can report bugs or issues concerning CPython. So we uh, prepared our uh, issues and proposed solutions to discuss with the core developers. All right. So we launched our first round discussion. And this time we got three things prepared. Number one, we provide the details of CVE. And number two, we provide our proposed solutions. And number three, we raised the question about compression ratio threshold. Wow. Not long after, we got our first reply from the core developer, Sir He. And he has two points. Number one, he said, the library should not limit the compression ratio. We can understand this because from the point of view of a, of a hacker, because C Python is an open source uh, programming language, Every source code can be read. So if you are a hacker, you can read the source code. So if we set a threshold there, it can be bypassed very easily. And number two, so he said, you shouldn't make a decision what zip file should be rejected. In other words, he, he means that it's the user's responsibility, not the C Python module's responsibility to verify the data. And we also got a reply from the second core developer Christian, and he has three opinions. Number one, he said, a low-level module should not limit extraction by default. Um, we can understand this because this is just like a butterfly effect. A small change in a low-level module would probably cause a great damage 
in a high-level application. And number two, he said, we can improve, we can probably improve the documentation. Well, we like this. Because we can tell users all, all the possible pitfalls, warnings concerning this uh, zip bomb issues. And we can also tell them how to prevent or how to mitigate this problem. And then users can use our knowledge to develop their uh, mitigations. And number three, so he said, uh, we can also implement some methods that simplifies the detection of zip bombs attacks. For instance, you can write some methods that returns the information such as um, total counts of files, compressed size, and the uncompressed size. And then users can use this information, and with the documentation we provided in number two, they can make their own judge. So you can say that, well, our first round discussion, we got rejected, but we never give up. So we launched our second round discussion with the core developer. And this time we have two points. Number one, we improve the documentation with appropriate warnings and solutions. And number two, we also implement some methods in zip files with Christians, the second core developer, his suggestion. Woo! Not long after, Sir He, once again, he has some ideas. This time he has two points. Number one, he said, he is against, he does not agree, huh? He is against such a trivial method in zip, uh, in zip file module because its interface is already complicated. And number two, he says, as for the documentation change, it could be useful to add some add more uh, general notes about possible pitfalls. In other words, he disagrees with the method implementation and he agrees with the document improvements. Also, we got a reply from Christian again. And this time he said, the correct approach is to always verify our data from untrusted sources. It's the 101 of application security, which means his idea is basically the same as Christian's idea in our first round discussion. It's the user's responsibility, not the CPython module's responsibility, to verify the data. So we can say that our second round discussion with a core developer got rejected. But we never give up. So we launched our third round discussion. And this time we know we had a consensus with the core developer, which is to improve the zip file documentation. So we list the compression pitfalls according to Sir He's suggestions, and we also add some of our ideas into the documentation. Uh, and after we done the patch, we directly send our documentation patch directly back to the C Python repository on GitHub. Not long after, we got our first approval from the author of famous Python package, Salary. His ID is uh, A-U-V-I-P-Y. And we also got another approval from the core developer. Her name is CSA Bella. And she also helped us to uh, request further review from Christian and Sir He. We had another good news. This is the, the fourth core developer, Victor Stinner. So he, uh, he owned a website which he documents uh, security issues in Python, and our zip bomb issue is also collected in this site. So if you visit the URL below here, you can see our work listed here. Okay. Wow, but after this, nothing happened in the next four months. We were waiting for the final approval, and this is so frustrating. However, two weeks ago, this is, the, this is true story, <laughs> two weeks ago, on September 11th, uh, we had a big surprise in the midnight. Core developer, Jason, he sent us an email. He said that after discussing with, this is Christian, the second core developer, Christian, they were happy to include our work. Wow, we just can't, can't get sleep that night now. We're so excited. 
All right, so now if you go to the uh, uh, C, uh, uh, Python official uh, documentation for the zip file module, on the left-hand side table of contents, in the section of the compression pitfalls, here, this part, this whole part, is our work. So, and this is the details of our work. We write this, we, we, uh, we wrote this, okay? We're happy to share with everyone here. All right, so, but wait a minute. Wait a minute. What if we can summarize all our findings, adventures, interesting things, and share it to PyCon TW? All right, and it accepted our proposal. So thanks for having us. We really had a lot of fun. Thank you. All right, so, but despite that we uh, had a lot of fun, actually we have something to say. We have three things to say. Number one, we encourage everyone to be bold. Because sometimes if you really want to do something, all you have to do is just ask for it. For instance, we directly send our application to the CVE authority, and we got the CVE number. And number two, we directly launched our discussion with the core developers on BPO. And number three, we directly send our documentation uh, patch back to the C Python repository on GitHub. Just do it, okay. And number two, we encourage everyone to be persistent because good results are there for persistence, guys. Guys, do you remember? We've waited for four months and nothing happens. And the last thing is that we encourage everyone to have fun. Please, ask yourself one question. Why am I doing this if I'm not having fun? Please remind yourself, the ultimate goal is to have fun. All right, despite we had a lot of fun, actually, we made a mistake. Guys, here, please, watch here. This is so important, don't do it again. All right, so next time, if you find a security issue, or vulnerability in C Python, do not, do not, okay? Do not post it on BPO. Do not, not, the red part, do not post it on BPO. Please directly send it, send an email to security at python.org because BPO is a public platform that everyone can read and you don't know what the hackers would do with the information you provide. All right, so this is the end of our, com uh, our presentation. We can also ask Questions? Does, any, does anyone want to ask our uh, speakers any, any questions? Please raise your hand. Please. Be a high show. Since, since there is no problem, I have one problem. Uh, since the, I think, I think during in your slides, the C Python core developer does not agree to uh, does not agree to uh, add the code change into the C Python, right? Yeah. They say that this is the user's responsibility to prevent such a, a malicious file. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, did you consider to write a third uh, to keep developing the third-party packages? They yeah, say actually, you, we do. Yeah. Uh, we did uh, this slide here. We uh, had a pipey package. Uh, sorry. Yeah, Sunzip. Yeah, Sunzip. But PIP install Sunzip. So it's already yeah. contains all the all the necessary uh, inspection yeah, you need all, to. All kinds of mitigations uh, we can collect it. We implement it into this uh, package. Actually, uh, our work is based on the, the uh, Cara Marie's work. Uh, she's, a, she's a presenter, uh, she's a speaker in Black Hat, I mean, uh, maybe 2019 or 18. Okay. Yeah, so she had a, she had a topic about a zip bomb, yeah. the compression bomb, and she, had devo she, she developed a lot of uh, mitigations, layer one, layer two, layer three, and what implement, we implemented all in the zip, sun zip module. Oh. Okay, maybe you should have another share and, and to promote this another package. Talk? Yeah. Maybe next maybe. year? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay.
Okay, so uh, does any other people have questions? If no, let's thank our speakers again. Ah, that's one. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, sure. Actually, we we did an experiment ex experiment experiments, and it's it's quite simple. If you um, if you extract the zip file, the zip bomb, uh, the the most the problem would be it it would you would not only uh, the most obvious problem is that it would be so huge that it exhausts the uh, disk disk volumes. So if, you're, if you open a terminal, you're typing ls, it prompts nothing. So that makes your computer denial of service. This is the most simple one. Actually, this is not a, this is not a very hard uh, security uh, issues to find. This is a simple one, but it costs a denial of service. Yeah. So actually, our, our presentation, uh, our, our talk, our, our what we think the most important thing is not how to find the security issue. The, the most important thing we want to deliver is our realness. We never give up and we try to fight back and forth, communicate back and forth with the core developers. We find consensus and we did make some contribution to the CPython community. That's what we want to share. Okay. Here. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to echo uh, what you said about persistent and uh, uh, to be bold about this. I think that happens in all kinds of software development processes, in either it's internally or in the open source com uh, community. Uh, but uh, I'm particularly interested in that, uh, um, like you, uh, in, in all the discussions uh, among you and the core developers, yeah. that uh, uh, the consensus that is that this uh, the file uh, decompression issue should be addressed in the application land, not in the core library land, right? Then how would you how would that be addressed if uh, the library cannot help? So we, we just list the problems and the, uh, the, the, the uh, mitigations on the documentation. So they think, because it's, the Christian said it's the 101, and so he has the same idea, which, they, which they, uh, their consensus is, is that's the user's responsibility. We wrote, we, we wrote it on the documentation. So every user, if you're a security guy, you should read it on the documentation, documentation first. But actually, uh, we, we just look into uh, the source code of Java. They had some code to uh, mitigate, and the threshold is 100. Yeah, but if I'm a hacker, I'll just make it 99. We pass. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. Okay. I see, so in your opinion, that is actually a kind of design decision yeah. for the core library. Mm -hmm. And it uh, may or may not be addressed in the low level part. Yeah. Uh, but in the application part, uh, education probably is a more prominent mm -hmm. factor that people can do. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Actually, we have some, uh, we have six minutes left. I have a little story to share with you guys. Uh, this is the second PyCon. We shared this topic. And actually, we shared this topic, the same topic, to PyCon Korea last month. And our work, did not get accepted. So I was on the uh, stage and I, I, I'm begging, <laughs> I'm begging Sir Heath and Christian, please review our work. We've waited for so long. <laughs> and, and it recorded on a video and it would be put it on YouTube. We did everything <laughs> to make our work accepted. And we also go to uh, uh, another core developer, uh, uh, Kara Wheeling. We, we find her, and for about 30 minutes, she gave our time to discuss how to make this make the progress. Yeah, this is fun. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thanks for your sharing about the experience to communicate with the uh, code developers. Yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, so does anyone have any other questions? If no, let's give a big applause to our speakers. Thank him. Thank you.